no computer, no cables. This is a full on Python environment running on a calculator. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how. Well, this may look like a simple DIY calculator and well, it is one. I put it together myself from a Clockwork Pi kit, but it's not just for crunching numbers. I've turned this into a completely self-contained Python machine. No computer needed. It's all thanks to a new update from my open source firmware, PicoWare, which lets me write, save, and run code directly on the device itself. I think this might just be the coolest calculator out there because it's powered by the Raspberry Pi Pico. Well, anyone who's tinkered with microcontrollers, whether it's a Raspberry Pi Pico, an Arduino, or an ESP32, you know the dance, right? It's a constant back and forth between your desk and your project. You get an idea, so you sit down at your computer. Then you open up Thani, you write your script, you grab your USB cable, you plug in your microcontroller, you flash the code, you wait, and then you unplug it, pop it into its actual project, and then you test it out. And of course, something is a little bit off. An LED blinks at the wrong speed, a sensor is reading backwards, or you find a typo in the message on the screen. So you have to do the whole process all over again. Unplug from the project, plug into the computer, change one line of code, reflash, unplug, retest, over and over and over. It's a workflow that keeps you chained to your main computer. Your awesome portable gadget suddenly isn't so portable when its brain is stuck at your desk. But what if you could just cut the cord completely? What if you could write and test your hardware projects anywhere with no laptop? That's the freedom promised by the new on-device code editor in PicoWare. The question is, does it actually deliver? Is it a gimmick or can this tiny calculator really become a true standalone development tool? Let's find out. Before we can start coding on the go, we've got to install the software that makes this all happen. To get that, we need to swap out the factory firmware with PicoWare. And this process is where you get to see how simple the Raspberry Pi Pico ecosystem is. First, we need to get our Pico calc into bootloader mode. It sounds technical, but it's extremely easy. You hold the boot select button, and then while you're holding it, you plug in a micro USB cable to the Pico itself. The second you do that, your computer will see the Pico Calc, but not as a calculator. It shows up as a simple USB drive. And if you're on a Pico or Pico W, it'll be named RPI-RP2. But if you're on a Pico 2 or Pico 2 W, it'll be named RP2350. This is the magic of the UF2 bootloader. Now you just need the firmware file. Go to Builds, MicroPython, and then download the correct file for your Pico. So if you're in a Pico W, you use the Pico W. If you have a Pico 2 W, a Pico 2 W, and so on and so forth. Now, all you do is drag and drop the firmware file onto the USB drive. And now when you turn on your Pico Calc, you'll see a simple desktop GUI with your device name in the top left corner. This is our first confirmation that everything worked. We've successfully installed the firmware and now the real fun can start. With PicoWare installed, let's see what this on-device editor can really do. From the desktop, hit enter to open the library. Then scroll down and click editor. It will ask us for a file name. We have to name our script, making sure to include .py at the end. I'll call it PicoWare. Slash apps. Slash. Random. Dash object.
And don't forget the dot pie. This is a key step because it tells PicoWare to save the file in the specific apps directory it uses to load runnable programs. Now we're at the moment of truth. Click save. And here we are. To really test this, we need to write a proper MicroPython app that interacts with the hardware. Let's build a fun little app that draws a random shape in a random color every time we press the enter button. This will test input handling, screen updates, drawing functions, and using libraries like random. I have a preview of the code on the screen, but I'll type out the code on the calculator's keyboard. Let's import random. Now, PicoWare has a specific structure for apps. Every app needs these three functions called start, run, and stop. So let's set up the start function. Def start. Um, view. Manager. Okay, and now let's import the vector class. Now we're going to get the draw object, clear the screen, and then write a text on the screen. Then comes the main logic inside the run function, which is a loop that runs continuously. Here I'll check for button presses. If the enter button is pressed, the magic happens. The code will pick a random color from a list of white, blue, red, and yellow, and then randomly choose a shape to draw. Maybe a circle, a rectangle, a line, or a rounded box. Each time it clears the screen and then draws the new shape. And then we have the back button, which allows the user to exit the app. This makes sure the app is responsive and doesn't get stuck. So let me add that in. That took about three minutes, so I jumped ahead, but now we need to set up the stop function, which is required. For this app, I'll add a line to call the garbage collector, which is a good practice for bigger projects to clean up resources and free up memory. Now we hit back twice to save. This says, do we want to save our changes? We just backspace and type in Y for yes and then click enter. Now, if we scroll down and click applications, 
we'll see our random object app in the list. And when we click it, it runs. Now, as we click enter, we see random objects with random colors. So there you have it. We took a DIY calculator kit, installed my open source PicoWare firmware, and turned it into a legit standalone Python development environment. We proved that you can write, save, and run code directly on the device, cutting the cord to the desktop for good. Now I want to hear from you. What would you build with this? Drop your best ideas down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this and want to see more projects that push the limits of what this device can do, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'm Jay Blanked. Thanks for watching. Peace.